has been working on comparing the understory of Alanthus altissima and a native tree pairing um, for a couple years through his plant ecology class at Grand Valley and then he did another year in West Virginia at Kenwa State um, State Park and what we've found what we expected to find was that Tree of Heaven would have lower diversity um, or I expected to find that Tree of Heaven would have lower biodiversity because it's an allelopathic invasive so I assumed that, or expected, that since Tree of Heaven had allelopathic tendencies, it wouldn't um, allow as many species to be found in the understory. And what we found is that Tree of Heaven had more species in there, in this understory, most likely due to uh, suppression of competition. So the allelopathic chemicals released by Alanthus are probably so low and in just enough concentration so that it really only prevents a couple species from dominating in the understory and therefore more species have the chance to appear and grow and thrive in the understory. So um, we didn't find too many significant differences. We looked at native versus invasive uh, understory tree or understory plant and we looked at forb, woody, legume, and grass species. And so we looked to see if the ratios of any of those were different um, under Tree of Heaven and under their native pairing. And we didn't really find any consistent differences. Um, every, once in a year, every once in a while, uh, forbs would be different, um, or there would be more invasives under Tree of Heaven usually, but it, it makes sense since Tree of Heaven had just more species overall. Um, but there was no consistent pattern. The only consistent pattern was that there were more species under Alanthus than there were under native trees. But that was only significant two of the five years, in 2009 and 2012. Um, and then we ran an NMDS to see if there were significant groupings, right? So we didn't find too many significant differences when we did our pairwise comparisons. So then we looked to ordinate the data and see if we could find differences that way. And through the NMDS, we found that there are significant clusters and significant differences between Alanthus and native understories. And I ran the NMDS just for the Michigan data. So it was for 2009 through 12. And when you look at all those years combined, um, not only are the Alanthus versus and the native plots different, uh, different species composition, but the years themselves are different too. So then I looked at each year individually in an NMDS to see it, what year was driving the differences. Um, and most of the only 2011 wasn't significantly different. So 2009, 10, and 12 had significant differences in understory composition than um, in Alanthus versus native tree pair. Uh, the native tree that we used to pair Alanthus with was any species at least 10 centimeters dbh and it had to be at least 15 meters away from um, the Alanthus. And so we had dogwood species, we had um, pines, we had uh, some walnuts, we had oaks, we had maples, so we had a good variety. And the number of plots that we surveyed each year varied, which could impact um, the strength and the trends of all the results that we've had. Um, we surveyed canopy cover uh, in 2011 and 2012. Uh, wondering if maybe the amount of light let in mattered um, and would affect the number of species growing in the understory. And there were no significant differences in canopy cover either year. And the, we did pairwise comparisons for DBH, so maybe just the trees were significantly different sizes and bigger trees um, or smaller trees or whatever had less species. And we didn't find any differences in DBH either, which um, Pretty, which led us back to the allelopathic chemicals are suppressing competition. Then we looked to see why the trend was significant in some years and not in others. And we were wondering if it had to do with climate. So all of these plots were surveyed in the early fall, August, September. And so we looked at summer 
uh, precipitation and summer temperature. And we did June, July, August, and I looked at each month individually, and then I looked at the average temperature and precipitation. And pre temperature didn't matter at all. Um, there was a weak correlation with uh, the average summer precipitation and with August precipitation. So precipitation might help explain the variance in significance and non-significance between the two, but um, it wasn't strong enough for me to be super confident in that, so I'm going to need to go back and look and see what else is possibly explaining the variance and trends. Anything? Next steps? Next steps? Uh, further analyses, double checking everything that I've done. Um, I got a good, couple good uh, suggestions when I was here from people stopping by and reading my poster, which I'm very appreciative for. And hopefully I can write this up and submit it for a future hopeful publication somewhere. And um, maybe, I'm not entirely sure if Gary's going to continue to do this experiment because he does it in one of his classes. Um, but maybe he will and we'll see if the trend continues.